Well, right now we're going to be joined by a Clemson University constitutional law professor, Kevin Vance, about the next steps in the election process and the Supreme Court on the Affordable Care Act. So again, Kevin, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. I really appreciate it. And according to the U.S. Constitution, Hi, Cody. what is supposed to happen after a presidential election? Well, after the election day that we had last Tuesday, the Constitution sets out two big milestones. The first one is the meeting and voting of the Electoral College, and that will be on December 14th this year. And that's when 538 electors from across the country gather and vote for president and vice president. And then the other big milestone is January 6th, and that's when the new Congress and a joint session meets to open up the sealed electoral votes, count them up, and then certify the winner of the presidential and vice presidential elections. So those are the two things that are coming up as the big markers. And if there is no, in cases where there is no majority vote, in that case, the House of Representatives would vote state by state for the president, and the Senate would vote for the vice president. But that seems exceptionally unlikely to happen this year. So that's what I was going to say. I mean, there's all kind of talk out there. We've seen it on social media. We've seen it coming from several different uh, sources. But what does happen? I know you touched on it. If states and these battleground states refuse to certify election results, I mean, has it ever happened? Do you, I mean, do you think that'll happen? Well, there was a big problem in 1876 when there were competing uh, slates of electors from different states, and it was a close presidential election. And after that, Congress passed a law to reform the electoral process, and one of those provisions was that there was a safe harbor deadline of six days before the Electoral College meets on December 14th. So on December 8th, if a state has certified its election results, then the federal government's law states that the federal government won't do anything to interfere with that. It'll treat that as conclusive. Uh, in an extraordinary circumstance where there was some dispute or some objection, in order for Congress to set aside electoral votes, both houses of Congress would have to agree on a particular objection. So again, given the particular set of circumstances this year, even if it were to come to that, it still seems exceptionally unlikely that anything significant would happen. And we know the president uh, has not conceded. Seems like he has no plans to do that, according to his team. Could this January 20th, that's when his first term officially ends at noon, I believe. So could the swearing in ceremony be delayed if this continues to be drawn out? What's, I mean, where do we go? What's the path? Well, almost certainly not. Uh, when the 12th Amendment was passed, and the 12th Amendment gives us the framework for presidential elections, the, one, of the object, one of the objects of the 12th Amendment was to limit the number of times when the House of Representatives would decide presidential elections. But one problem that it did not solve was what do you do when there's not an Electoral College vote majority and the House can't agree on a president and the Senate can't agree on a vice president? And I don't really know, but it's so exceptionally unlikely that it's, uh, I hope, not really worth worrying about, especially not now. But hopefully, hopefully we'll never live long enough to experience something like that. And you know, there's a lot of talk about Pennsylvania, North Carolina, that changing their election laws prior to the election. Is it a case of what's done here? Is, could this end up in litigation as well? I mean, there's just so much talk. I think so many people are confused. There's so many sides coming you know, at bat here. What are we talking about, especially with these two states that seem to be taking a lot of attention? Right. So with those two states, uh, I'd say in definitely the North Carolina case, it seems like what's done is done as far as the Supreme Court is concerned. Uh, in the Pennsylvania case, it's almost certainly the case that what's, that what's done is done. It is possible the court could reconsider whether or not to count ballots that arrived after the election day, the original election day deadline. But those ballots haven't been counted today, and Biden's margins are big enough that they probably wouldn't matter. And so the odds of that being uh, significant in terms of the presidential election are quite low. You know, I know a lot of people are looking back 20 years ago, but again, we were talking about one state, 500 votes or so separating them. Now we have several states with thousands of votes difference. And I just mentioned this. I mean, at this point, you know, as of today, President Trump tweeted out, we will win. So it seems like he has no intent of conceding, at least right now. So, I mean, what happens? I don't, has it ever happened where a president doesn't come out and concede and just, I mean, I think there's a lot of first here. I don't really know. So what would happen if he doesn't concede here? 
On the historical matter, I'm not 100 percent sure. I mean, there were some close ones in 1800 that led to the 12th Amendment, uh, but certainly in modern history. But if he doesn't concede, as long as he leaves the White House by noon on January 20th, nothing will happen. There's no constitutional requirement that a president concede the election. And so everything should be should be OK, uh, given those deadlines that I mentioned of December 14th for the Electoral College, January 6th for certifying the winner. Uh, and of course, Biden's margin in the states that he needs to get to 270 electoral votes seem like there won't be any issue there. All right. Well, Kevin, thanks so much. A lot of good insight there. I know a lot of people uh, watching this very closely. And hopefully we can have you back uh, as we uh, move forward in this uh, whole pathway. So thanks so much for joining us tonight. That'd be great. Great to talk to you.